The AI job market is crazy right now. Everybody's claiming they're AI native. Every LinkedIn profile says experience with AI tools. But when I sit across from candidates in interviews, designers, product managers, engineers, I ask them one simple question. Show me what you've built with AI. Hmm. About 80% of them freeze. They've been talking about AI without actually building with it. And here's the hard truth. You're not going to land the AI job that you want just by putting ChatGPT on your resume. Today, I'm going to show you exactly what I think AI hiring managers are looking for. And by the end of this video, you're going to know how to prove you're actually AI native and not just saying it. Because the people who get these jobs, they show their work differently. Now, for those who don't know me, my name's Jason Sear, and I'm currently the VP and Head of Design for Cisco Security and AI Businesses. This channel, it's where I share the things I found that actually work. It's for designers, product managers, and engineers who care about creating impact, not just shipping features. So if any of that resonates with you, you might consider subscribing. Okay, let's get into it. So here's what most people get wrong when they're going after AI roles. Being AI native isn't about listing AI tools on your resume. It's not about taking an online course. It's not even about working at an AI company. Being AI native, in my opinion, is about one thing. Your personal obsession with using AI tools to solve real problems. I mean, you can't help but experiment with every new model. You build tools that solve your problems, not because somebody asked you to, but because you're genuinely curious about what's possible. Whether you're a designer, a product manager, an engineer, or a researcher, you develop taste in AI not by reading about it, but by using it constantly. Let me show you what I look for. When I interview candidates now, I skip all the theoretical discussions and instead I ask three questions that instantly reveal their real experience. Question number one, what's in your AI toolkit right now? Someone who is truly AI native will light up and start describing their setup, which MCP servers they're running, why they switched from cursor to windsurf or vice versa, how they use Claude for creative work, but ChatGPT4 for structured data. They'll have opinions formed through real experience, not blog posts. But someone who's less experienced, they're gonna say like, oh yeah, I use ChatGPT and some other tools. No depth, no personal workflow, no strong opinions. Okay. Here's question two. What's broken for you right now? Real builders, they have war stories. They've hit context window limits. They've dealt with hallucinations in production. They've figured out workarounds for rate limits. I, for example, spent about 50 bucks in AI tokens on an N8N workflow that went into an endless loop. You only make that mistake once. And the great thing is that single failure has shaped how we think about AI agents having budgets for tasks. Real experience means that you've pushed tools until they've failed and you've learned from those failures. Question number three, what are you building for yourself right now? This, to me, is the killer question. AI native folks always have personal projects. An agent that organizes their notes, a tool that generates design variations, something that automates a workflow that they hate doing. One of my latest projects, I subscribe to a ton of newsletters and podcasts, but I never have time to read them all. So I built an agent that goes through my Gmail every Saturday night. It re reviews everything that came in that week, summarizes it, prioritizes it based on my interests and priorities, and sends me a digest custom to me every Sunday morning for what I should be looking at. It doesn't just tell me what to read, it tells me why it matters to me personally, and it even gives me these great reflection prompts so that I can think about the content and it actually sticks. Now, did I build that because my job required it? No, I built it because I couldn't stand a manual process anymore. That's the difference. Now, let me tell you what happens when an entire team becomes AI native. So at Cisco, we've recently held something we call vibing with customer sessions. This is like a design review with customers, but instead of showing static prototypes, our research and design team set up live sessions with a prototype in Vercel V0. 
And customers didn't just comment on the designs, we actually gave them hands-on keyboard access to Vercel, and they actually started shaping the prototype using their own natural language right there in the session. Watching customers use language to iterate, it reveals their mental models in ways that traditional research never could. But here's the key. Our team could only run these sessions because they deeply understood the tools themselves. They knew what was possible, what would break, and how to guide the experience. We've also started monthly AI and design showcase meetings. No polished presentations, just raw learnings. Designers come in and show the experiments and the things that they're doing. One designer built a command line tool because they got frustrated with how V0, V0 rebuilds things even for small changes. Another used prompt chaining to understand an incident responder's needs layer by layer. Someone else showed us a Figma Make prototype, something that used to take 20 to 30 minutes, now taking only two to three minutes. The pattern is clear. Designers who use AI to solve their own problems become infinitely better at designing AI experiences for others. All right, so you might be thinking, Jason, I am building stuff, but how do I show it? And that's a really great question. So here's what most designers I think get wrong. They showcase the AI products they've designed, but not the AI tools that they've built or experimented with. As a hiring manager, I'm looking for evidence that you've lived in this world, not just designed for it. Here's what an AI native portfolio actually looks like, in my opinion. First, create an AI experiment section. Don't bury this in the case studies, make it prominent. Include your current AI stack with screenshots of your actual setup, your cloud desktop with MCP servers running, screenshots of your cursor workspace, your N8N workflows. The options are endless. This isn't about being polished, it's about being real. Second, make sure to document your failures. Show me the agent that hallucinated customer data, the automation that broke after an API update, the prompt that generated completely wrong outputs. Then show me how you fixed it. This demonstrates real experience more than any success story. Third, show me your velocity. Traditional portfolios show final outputs typically. AI native portfolios show speed of iteration. Record a two minute video of you using V0 to go from an idea to a prototype. Show how quickly you can test variations with AI. Finally, share your opinions. Write short posts about your tool preferences, why I switch from cursor to windsurf, three ways Claude outperforms GPT-4 for design work. These opinions formed through experience are incredibly valuable. And here's the thing, make it interactive. If you've built tools, try to make them accessible. Host your automations. Share your custom GPTs or cloud projects with view links. Let people try your tools. Nothing proves AI native thinking like tools that other people can actually use. I mean, we're all product builders after all. This is what we do, right? Now, maybe you're watching this thinking, man, I'm not there yet. Where do I even start? And that's a fair point. So here's a practical path. Four weeks, real problems, real results, nice and easy. Week one, just solve one problem. Pick something that annoys you daily. Maybe it's summarizing meeting notes, organizing research findings, creating design variations. Choose one tool, Claude, Desktop, Cursor, V0, and just try to solve that specific problem. Don't try to learn everything all at once, and you might not solve it, but the key is you're trying. Success looks like having one thing in your workflow that you couldn't imagine doing manually ever again. Week two, start to connect your workflow. Now expand. If you started with Claude, add an MCP server to connect it to your files. If you're using Cursor, build something out that's even more complex. The goal here is integration, making AI part of how you work, not a separate experiment. Week number three, see if you can build something for others. Create something your team can use, a research synthesis tool, a design critique, a design critique assistant, an automated re report generator. 
Maybe it's something for your kids. Maybe it's something for your spouse. But getting feedback from others reveals blind spots and pushes you to think about reliability and edge cases in entirely new ways. Week four, form your opinions. By now you've hit the walls, you've found the workarounds, you've developed preferences. Document what you've learned, share it with your team, or even better, publicly. You're not claiming expertise, you're contributing to the collective learning. That's exactly what I try to do with these videos. Your fresh perspective on what worked and what didn't, that has value. Becoming AI native isn't just about individual skills. It's about transforming how teams work. When everyone can prototype ideas quickly, when researchers can synthesize vast amounts of data, when designers can ship functional code, the entire dynamic changes. We've seen designers suddenly able to dabble in code and data visualization. Conversations between design, product, and engineering get richer because we can prototype ideas in minutes instead of weeks. The gap between idea and reality shrinks dramatically, but it's not all smooth sailing. Tools don't always integrate well. AI sometimes changes things you didn't want change. Quality varies wildly between use cases. Being AI native means navigating these challenges and not avoiding them. We're building AI experiences for enterprise customers who don't yet know what's possible. And so we need people who do know what's possible. Not because they've designed AI interfaces, but because they've lived in this world. They've pushed every boundary. They've developed taste through thousands of experiments. So ask yourself, do you get excited when new models drop? Do you build tools to solve your own problems? Do you have opinions about which AI coding assistant is best and why? Do you run experiments just for fun? And can you explain what MCP is and why it matters? Well, if you answered yes to most of those, you're on the right track. But if you're still just using ChatGPT to write emails and calling yourself AI native, let me tell you, you've got some building to do first. The future belongs to those who build with AI, not just for it. The question isn't whether AI will change how we work, it's whether you'll be shaping that change or just commenting on it. I know which side I'm on. What about you?